Welcome to the Content Marketing for Artists webinar by The Abundant Artist. I am Corey Huff, creator of The Abundant Artist. I'm so excited to have so many of you here today. Um, looks like right now we have just over 100 people uh, live on the webinar, so I'm excited to have you all here today. We, have, we should have a bunch more people joining us in just a minute. A few housekeeping items before we jump right into all of the content. Um, we're, today we're going to cover a lot of ground. Uh, the webinar should go probably just over an hour, and we'll have, we should have time for questions. Um, if you have questions along the way, go ahead and type your questions into uh, the question section there in the GoToWebinar software. And uh, you, know, you can see on the screen here what we're going to cover today. We're going to have a quick overview of what content marketing is. We're going to uh, capture, uh, talk about capturing your stories and creating content from them. Uh, learning how to identify your audience and, and then uh, showing them what they want to see and talk to them about what they want to talk about. We're going to show you some examples of artists who are doing it really well. And uh, in case you don't know, uh, you can ask questions on the webinar by looking at the GoToMeeting software and typing your questions into uh, the uh, question section there on the software. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, who am I? Uh, I'm Corey Huff. And uh, a little bit about my background, I have a BS theater. Uh, all my friends are artists, and I'm an artist. I'm an actor, storyteller, and, and, and a husband. Um, I've had six years experience in corporate digital strategy, meaning I, I do online marketing for uh, some of the biggest companies in the world. And uh, for the last three years, I've been running theabundantartist.com as a way of teaching artists what I know about selling uh, products online selling, and selling art online. And it's been a really great experience to work with so many artists and have them uh, be a part of what we're doing. So let's talk about what content marketing is. What is content marketing? Uh, so content marketing is a, a specific kind of marketing, a subset of marketing that has really been around for quite a while. It, it didn't start with the internet. It started back in 1904. Uh, there, there was a, a company called Jello that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And Jello thought, how do we get more people to buy Jello? Why don't we create a cookbook and then sell that to everybody as, and, as ways to uh, you know, create things with Jello? And it was phenomenally successful. People bought uh, you know, thousands and thousands of copies of the Jello cookbook, and it uh, made Jello a household name. Another good example of content marketing uh, comes in 1982. There was a, a company that wanted to uh, sell little toys, little toy soldiers called G.I. Joe's. And they thought, well, how can we sell these toys? Well, one way to do that would be to parvel, uh, partner with Marvel comic books and sell uh, G.I. Joe comic books. Um, it revolutionized toy sales and, uh, as a way of uh, creating stories around the G.I. Joe toys was a way to sell more toys. Some contemporary versions of content marketing. So Apple puts out the iPod, and Nike recognizes an opportunity by creating a piece of software for the iPod and a little uh, GPS unit to attach to you and your, to yourself when you're running. And they revolutionize uh, running and exercise by giving people a way to track their exercise, their running, their bicycle, their uh, whatever kind of exercise they were doing. And uh, then they could upload that, uh, upload that software to their computer and, and take a look at you know, how far they ran and how many calories they burned. And as a result, uh, Apple sold more iPods and Nike was able to sell more shoes and other clothing. Uh, this is a great way for them to get themselves in front of more people. And probably one of the most classic examples of modern content marketing is Blendtec's Will It Blend videos. Um, you've probably seen these uh, videos where they, they blend all sorts of crazy things. In this video here, uh, Blendtec decided to go ahead and blend an iPad. And it was phenomenally successful for them. Uh, they saw a 600% increase in sales just by uh, adding, uh, just by putting videos on the web of them blending uh, different items in their blenders. So content marketing is really making what you do interesting in other contexts. Um, Mark McGuinness, who is a great marketer in the UK, um, he says you know, that what people are looking for is really original and remarkable media on the web. And the, west that, the, the less that your content looks like advertising, the more effective it will be at advertising. 
And that's really what Mark calls the unfair advantage that artists and creative people have. Uh, you, as a, as a creative person, somebody who lives to create every single day, you have an opportunity to uh, come up with things that other people would never think of, and your art and your creativity can be the primary driver behind uh, work, creating word of mouth around, around your art. So let's talk a little bit about some artists who have done a good job with content marketing. I want to sh start with Gwen Kimmel. Gwen is an artist that lives uh, in Portland, Oregon, where I'm from. And uh, Gwen, uh, her new series, Crime Against Nature, uh, well, I'll just show you this video and let her explain it to you. I have never saved my life. I think I wanted to once when I was maybe 11 or 12, and my mother informed me that I was too young to save my life. By the time she felt like it was more appropriate, I had grown out of the idea that I wanted to save my life, which I already that I could never. Um, I don't save my life for three weeks for one thing. I like Harry's light. If it were darker, I think I would probably be kind of fishy. Uh, for another, it's a really good way of identifying morons. And morons, I mean by that uh, people who make certain life choices and then believe that everyone else should make the same life choices. And then space is a good way of identifying morons who do not embrace their own body care and believe that anyone who does embrace their body care is somehow wrong. More useful than my that. Finally, uh, not saving my life is my own way of resisting the beauty industry and this arbitrary standards. Well, it sounds like uh, the audio isn't working on the video, so we'll go ahead and skip over it. Um, basically, what you need to know about Gwen's video there is she talks a little bit about her background uh, as, as an artist and about why she doesn't shave her legs, which is basically um, a response to uh, contemporary beauty standards and a response to commercialism. And then uh, she ends the video uh, by talking about her inspiration for her new series, Crime Against Nature, which is essentially finding examples of animals uh, who don't conform to what we consider to be normal gender stereotypes. And in this video, she talks about elk and how, you know, the, the elk that we all think of with the big, huge antlers, not all male elk have big, huge antlers. Some of them don't have antlers at all. And those elk that don't have antlers are just as successful at breeding as uh, antlers who do have antlers, or uh, elk who do have antlers. And then she, at the end, shows uh, a, a quick few shots of the progress of her creating the painting of elk. And you can actually see it on this slide. It's the uh, second from the right on the bottom of that grid of images. And uh, she goes through several different uh, iterations of that painting, showing people how she made that painting. And then Gwen took all of these paintings and she put them into a book. And that book is called Crime Against Nature. And you can see a screenshot of the book cover there on the right. And the book has been phenomenally successful for Gwen um, as a way of showing all of her work together in one place and giving her a place where she can talk about the things that she considers important. So the, the, this whole idea of content marketing, of taking uh, you know, your whole process and explaining it to people, documenting it, and putting it together into uh, several different media, video, uh, a website, uh, painting, a book, is a way of creating a cohesive uh, whole around your art and your marketing. So, Action item number one, and for those of you who are taking notes, we will have a recording. Uh, I saw several people asking that question. We will obviously have a recording. But um, action item number one is document your process. As you're creating art, take pictures, take video, record yourself talking through your ideas. Whatever you need to do, whatever medium feels right, document your process. And be sure to include not only what you did, but be sure to include why you did it and how you feel about your process and what you think and what your art is in response to. So, okay, you have now have your process. You fast forwarded in time, you created a, a, a body of work, then you have your, your process documented. What do you do with it now? So, before we dive too deep into the how to's, I want to talk a little bit about who are you creating content for? If you're going to create videos, books, magazines, and all that stuff, who are you creating that content for? And there are a few different personas. 
people who buy art break down into uh, what I see as essentially six different categories. There's the professional art collectors and investors, and those are the people who drive the, uh, the art marketing world that gets all the news, right? You know, when we hear about, you know, so-and-so's painting just sold for X million dollars, and those are generally sold to people who are professional investors. They have tons of money, and they buy art because they think it's going to go up in value. Uh, and then there are art enthusiasts, and there these are people who you know they're looking for something to decorate their home, they're looking for something to uh, you know be an accent piece in their home or something to go in their yard. And then there's curators, and these are people who run museums. They they might uh, you know work with gallery owners to curate shows, and curators are, are you know they're sort of tastemakers of the art world. Uh, and then there's gallery owners, and there are people who you know they're looking at your art as essentially a product. Can they uh, sell your product and make a profit from it? And then there are other people. There's other other categories: interior designers, corporate buyers, people who want to decorate, uh, you know, an office, or people who want to decorate. You know, you see you see art all the time in dental dental offices, doctors' offices. There are people whose sole job is to buy and sell art for those sorts of environments. So when you're thinking about who am I talking to with my marketing, who am I blogging for, who am I creating video and books for? to think about, you know, who are you really going to sell to and, and who is really potentially going to be interested in your art. Um, and then think about, okay, if I'm going to sell my art online, how am I going to sell my art online? What is that experience going to be like? Am I going to have e-commerce? Am I going to have a shopping cart with credit cards? Am I going to be selling commissions? And maybe I don't do pre-made art. Maybe I I only uh, make art for people who uh, buy from me. You see, a lot, you see this a lot with pet portrait artists. They, you know, they, they might have some stuff that they've made, but quite often somebody will call them up and or give them a picture of a pet and say, hey, I want you to paint my pet. Um, and then, of course, there's the, there's the other category of selling your art online, which isn't so much selling your art as showcasing for galleries, museums, art agents, and other collectors. And maybe you don't have an e-commerce experience on your site. Maybe you don't sell directly. But you still need to have a, a good place to show off your art, and content marketing can still serve you there as a way of driving people to go back to your website and take a look at your art. Oops, I'm just going to take a look. There's some questions. I'm going to take a pause here. Can you all hear me? Go ahead and type, type in the chat and make sure, let's just make sure you can hear me. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody. Whoa, yes, yes. Okay, good. You can all hear me. Whoa, there are hundreds of you. <laughs> awesome. So now that you know what it means to sell art online, let's talk about action item number two. You need to understand who you are as an artist. And for the purpose of this webinar, we're not going to dive too deep into, into understanding your uniquity. Um, for those of you who've been reading The Abundant Artist for a while know that I use this term, uniquity, to describe the, your essential essence as an artist. What are you about? Who do you talk to? Uh, what sets you apart from other artists? And how, uh, you know, how, how does that affect your marketing? For the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to assume that you already have at least an elementary understanding of who you are as an artist and what makes you different. And so, that's like the second thing you need to have in order to produce some good quality content marketing. Okay, so let's build some content that your collectors want to see. Uh, a lot of times collect, uh, art collectors, whether they're commercial buyers or uh, investors or curators, they want to get an understanding of the process. They want to see a behind the scenes look. That's why you see uh, people selling uh, you know, DVDs with director commentaries and uh, you know, behind the scenes footage and documentaries of how the movie was made. Um, you know, I'll spend hours and hours and hours watching the Lord of the Rings uh, uh, special edition because I love seeing how the movie was made. Some people don't care about that, but some, too, some do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each stage of the purchase cycle and um, break that down and talk about content that can be made for each stage, each stage of the purchase cycle. And then we're going to talk about automating and outsourcing. Uh, one of the big things that came across in the questions that you guys asked me for this webinar was, how do I save time? Uh, and how do I spend less time marketing? And that's a great question. And we can help you do that by automating and outsourcing some of the marketing. So let's talk a little bit about the marketing funnel. 
for those of you who did not go to business school, uh, the marketing funnel is the way that business people think about marketing and about what stage of marketing they're in. And I'll just explain this real, real quickly. So in order for anybody to buy anything from you, they need to be aware of who you are. That's the first stage of marketing. So a lot of your, a lot of your marketing is going to be about uh, creating awareness of who you are as an artist. So maybe you create videos that you, know, you try to get as many people to see them as possible so that once they, once they are aware of you, you can create some sort of trigger. Uh, this is, hey, join my mailing list to, so that you know who I am, or uh, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on social media, or come to my website. That's some sort of trigger to get people to do something. And then a little further down the funnel, people are going to start considering whether or not they're going to buy. They're going to search out uh, you know, reviews of your work. They're going to uh, look for other people who have purchased your work. And they're going to start thinking about, okay, maybe I, I might want to buy something. Um, and then they go you know, through the purchase process, which you know, we'll, we'll talk about making the purchase process a good experience. And then after the buying cycle, your marketing is actually not done. Um, the most effective and the, and the cheapest form of marketing is done to people who've already purchased from you. Uh, they've already shown that they like you, that they like your work, and now you have an opportunity to, go, to turn around and get them to buy more of your work. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Find some problems with my mouse here. Excellent. All right, if you are having problems with any of the audio, sometimes GoToMeeting uh, has some problems with the audio, and, you, and you'll need to um, just go ahead and exit out of GoToMeeting and, and rejoin the webinar. Like, as I mentioned, we are recording this, so don't fear if you, if you have to back out and come back. We'll, we'll get you set up. Okay, so what do we do once we understand our buying cycle and we're, and we're starting? How do, we, how do we create content for each stage of the buying cycle? And this is, uh, this is my uh, secret weapon that I use when I'm creating new marketing content. It, I, it's my content marketing checklist. And this is, this is a summarized version of it because I don't want to overwhelm everybody. But uh, let's talk a little bit about each point in this checklist. So the first piece, content for the buying cycle, awareness. This is my buddy Matt. And Matt is a phenomenally successful artist uh, that lives here in Portland, Oregon as well. And he makes molds, uh, kinetic sculptures. And you can see up, uh, on the on the left, in the picture there on the left, Matt is looking up at a mobile of his in progress that is actually wired up to glow. And this piece is uh, part of a much larger piece that is going to be going in a corporate installation. And uh, Matt's been doing this for about seven, eight years. Uh, some of you may have seen an interview that I did with him where he talks about how he got started. But Matt does a really good job of letting people in behind the scenes to see uh, what his work is like in progress. You can go to his blog at Echo, at Echo Workshop um, at echomobiles.com, and you can see uh, you know, in, in various stages how his work is done uh, with him as his assistant Ben. And then on the right, you see workshops. Uh, one of the things that helps Matt get the word out about his work is the workshops that he does. And in, in these workshops, he's showing some kids at a local elementary school how to build mobiles uh, from simple parts like wooden dowels and small pieces of metal and paper. Uh, so that's been uh, very successful and helpful for Matt. Um, another uh, artist by the name of Matt LeBlanc, who lives in Canada, uh, does a phenomenal job uh, with some of his marketing. And I want to show you this video. Um, I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I want to play a little clip so you can see what this video looks like. I'm going to skip ahead so you can see, even if you can't see the sound, you can see, or can't hear the sound, you can see uh, what Matt does with this video. And you can see that these are simple still images that he uh, has a Ken Burns effect on with the, with the words. And here in just a second, you'll see some pretty fun stuff that Matt starts doing. Um, he starts playing. Some, he starts playing some simple rhythms, and then uh, we fast forward through what he's as he's thinking about what he's doing, and then you can see him start to create his splatter art 
on these white on these white pieces of cloth, demonstrating how he does what he does for potential collectors. And this video has been very successful for Matt. He's done uh, several videos like this. I accidentally skipped, skipped backwards there. But the rest of the video is, uh, these, again, these simple splatter paintings. Somebody asked me how much the recording will cost for this webinar. Uh, the recording for this webinar will be absolutely free. Um, I won't be charging for this webinar at all. So let's talk a little bit more about, um, about Matt's work and about how other artists are doing successful content marketing. Um, let's talk, the next stage in content marketing, after you've created videos for awareness and, and, and content that you can use for awareness, let's talk a little bit about after somebody sees a video of yours or they see a blog post of yours, how do you get those people to opt in to uh, hear more from you? You know, a lot of times people see a blog post or they see a video and they say, oh, you know, that was great, and they move on and they never hear from you again. The key is to get them to opt in to some sort of an email experience and the way to drive traffic back to your site, you want to use some of the some of these pieces that you created, um, you know, whether it's a video or a blog post. You can offer up if you if you offer up something incredible, your art or some other really interesting insight um, in the right context, you'll get people to be interested in need to take that next step. Um, the next another key to driving traffic is search engine optimization. You want to make sure that you understand uh, how do people search for the kind of art that you create on the web. Um, you know, if you are a contemporary abstract artist, you want to make sure that uh, the titles of your blog posts and the titles of the pages on your website say, you know, contemporary abstract artist. Um, and there's uh, all sorts of key uh, tools that you can use, um, like the Google Keyword tool um, that will show you how to do that keyword research. Um, you can do things like blog about controversial topics and take a stand on them. You know, maybe you really hate galleries, and you can uh, blog about it and take a stand there. Um, people will share those blog posts, and they'll comment on them, and they'll talk about them with other friends, um, and that drives traffic to your website. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with uh, blogging about controversial topics. Uh, you know, you don't want to be controversial just for the sake of being controversial, but if you have something intelligent to say, you should go ahead and say it. Um, you know, the the Glenn the video by Glenn Seymour there at the top of the at the top of the webinar. Um, Glenn was talking about some some controversial topics around uh, gender roles and whether or not women should shave their life. These are these are important things to her, and she legitimately has something to say as an artist. Um, news drafting techniques. So what's what's popular in the news right now? Um, you know, is there is there a big uh, news piece on the city that you're from? Maybe you talk about the city you're from in, in your content, in your blog post, in your um, social media sharing. And then guest posting uh, to other artists' websites. You know, maybe, maybe you uh, take some turns between each artist's website. You have a little group of artists, and you uh, take turns sharing with, the, with each other uh, how you feel about certain topics and how, or how you approach certain techniques and share that with other artists' audiences. It's a great way to grow your audience. So, after you have some content created and you are, are thinking about you know, things that you can uh, generate, getting people to opt into that next step. Um, Melissa Dinwiddie, who is my business partner, does a great job of getting people to opt into her email list. And if you know Melissa, she, she's a, what she calls, she calls herself a creative multi-potentialite. In addition to being a, a painter and a Katuba artist, Melissa also does some coaching courses. Uh, for people who want to learn to be creative. So, uh, you know, if you go to Melissa's website, uh, you can join her Creative Sandbox 101 course, which is just, uh, you know, helping people understand how the creative process works and learning to play. And she, on the page, she has some specific uh, benefits that people can get by signing up to her mailing list. And then uh, a very clear call to action and a very simple call to action, which is just enter your first name and your email address and then you sign the up button. Uh, another artist who does a great job of uh, and, uh, getting people to sign up for her email list is Lisa Furkey. 
And Lisa Ferkey is, uh, I love, she was one of the first uh, artist, news, artist newsletters that I ever signed up for. And she's just fun and quirky. And she always says that her last name, Ferkey, rhymes with quirky. And uh, Lisa, uh, the rabbit rabbit email list is just the name of what she calls her email newsletter. And sometimes just something as simple as an interesting name uh, for your newsletter can do a, a good job getting people to sign up. And Lisa makes it even more simple by just having this, uh, you know, just the email address uh, field there for you to enter, for you to enter her and join her mailing list. Jolie Gillibo, another Portland artist, um, does a great job of getting people to sign up for her uh, daily email. And Jolie's been doing this for years. She literally sends out uh, a new painting, um, usually between four or five days a week. Uh, and uh, you, you're welcome for the shout out, Melissa, no problem. Um, Jolie uh, does a good job, and she literally, you know, three to five emails every week. Um, she does the daily painting thing, and she, uh, when she finishes those pieces, she puts them out uh, and to her mailing list and uh, shares a little bit about that daily painting. It's just a paragraph or two, um, and that's a great thing that she does that's been very successful for her. Um, if you're familiar with uh, Hugh McLeod, or rather if you're not familiar with Hugh McLeod, you definitely should be. Um, he's a great voice uh, on creativity and art marketing and thinking differently as an artist. Um, and Hugh sends out daily cartoons, uh, and this is one of my favorites. It's one of the one of the early ones that he sends out right when you join the mailing list. But he's got a little animated gift there that says "Dream Big." So the next stage in the content marketing uh, checklist: building relationships. Um, blogging, email, social media, email and social media, and building value through exclusivity, authenticity, and status. All phenomenally important things for artists. I'm just going to look at a couple questions here. If you have to pick one marketing tool for the beginner, what would you, um, what would you pick? Uh, Ryan, that's a great question. Uh, if I had to pick one marketing tool for the beginner, um, if you were going to pick one marketing tool, I would pick uh, having an email list and getting people to sign up for your email list. So let's talk about building relationships with, with content marketing. Um, your blogging content strategy doesn't have to be very complicated, but you should have one. And the easiest way to create a blogging content strategy is to start with doing a little bit of research. That research should be find 15 to 20 or 30 other artists who are blogging online and uh, look at what they're doing. How are they marketing themselves? How are they, what are they blogging about? How are they presenting themselves online? Um, what's different from what you're doing? What is similar to what you're doing? How can you set yourself apart from those other artists? Who are they talking to? What is their voice, tone and style like? And then start talking to your readers. You know, every artist has at least a couple of readers. You can start talking to them and finding out you know, what do they want to hear about. If you're a little bit further along and you've got a couple hundred readers or maybe even a thousand, talk to them about what they want to hear about. Why do they read your blog? What are they interested about with your art? Talk to them and then look, sit down and look at your documented process, you know, why you make your art, what you love about it, how you did it, and uh, you know, thinking about what all these other artists are doing. Think about 20 to 30 different topics of content that you could create. You know, whether it's you know, how you created a particular piece um, from start to finish, or if it's, you know, why you choose not to shave your legs, and uh, sit down and say, okay, I'm going to publish on my blog once, twice, three times a week, whatever makes sense for you, and then just literally schedule it out and say, I am going to uh, post on my blog every Tuesday, and here's my 30 topics, and Every Tuesday, I'll have a new topic go live, and in order to meet that schedule, I'm going to set aside this time on my calendar, you know, one, one hour every afternoon or every morning, whenever you feel like you, you are up to creating new con marketing content, um, and have that same time every day or several times a week that you are devoted to creating content for your marketing, and then just pound it out, and, and don't do just one piece a week write and create as much as you can during that regular time period so that you have content stored up and ready to go. So that when you, when that 
day, every Tuesday comes and you want to publish a new blog post, you're ready to go. So let's talk about automating distribution of content. And I'm, uh, this, this stuff starts to become magical after you understand how easy it is and how much time it can save you. So let's talk about how we automate distribution of content. Um, I'm going to talk about WordPress because that's the tool that I use. Uh, so if you are using WordPress and you have blog posts ready to go live, um, you know, as I mentioned, maybe you've created four or five blog posts in advance, so you're a month out for your content. Uh, you can schedule blog posts to go live at a certain time. So maybe you create four or five blog posts and you say, I want this blog post to go live on May 25th at uh, 20 o'clock, which is 8 o'clock at night. I wouldn't recommend 8 o'clock at night as a time to go live, but that's an example. Um, and then you can schedule the next one for the following week and then the next one for the following week. And then you can do some really magical stuff uh, where you can automatically publish all your blog posts to people's email inboxes with something with a tool called RSS to email. And if you're using MailChimp.com as your email provider, uh, they make it super simple. Um, essentially, you go in to your MailChimp dashboard, uh, as you can see on the screenshot on the right there, you say create campaign, and you pick RSS-driven campaign. You plug in your uh, website speed, which if you're using WordPress, is just yourdomain.com slash feed. And you tell it what day you want those emails to go out. And then uh, the RSS campaign will literally just grab your latest blog post and push it out via email to everybody on your mailing list. And that is a easy automated way of getting your blog posts out to everybody on your mailing list. And as you drive more and more people to sign up for your mailing list, more and more people see your blog post and it sort of feeds on itself because if you put out a good blog post, people share it with their friends. If you put out an interesting piece of art and it gets published to your mailing list, people share with their friends, and it just becomes this virtuous circle of, of building on itself through sharing and uh, through reminding people that you're there. Auto-posting to social media. Uh, this is something that, again, if you're using WordPress, you can do. Uh, there are a couple of plugins for WordPress that will automatically post your content to uh, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest, et cetera, et cetera. So the next scripts plugin um, will automatically post any new blog post to any of these social media that's listed here, and there's a bunch of others that aren't listed. And if you are an artist who has an archive of content, maybe you've been blogging for years, and, and you've got some great stuff back in the day that, that nobody reads anymore, you can resurface that old content by using a plugin called Tweetly that will take, uh, you, can, you can have it scan for a random old piece and tweet it once every few hours or once every day. Um, you can also have it uh, pick certain categories. So maybe you only want to take uh, archives of certain categories of blog posts and post those out. Tweetly will handle that for you as well. So then you can spend less time posting to social media and less time handling your email and more time creating your art and more time on creating great content. A little bit about social media management. Uh, if you, for whatever reason, uh, don't want to auto-post from your website, uh, there are some tools that will allow you to schedule social media posts. And I use uh, one of those tools that I use is called Hootsuite. You can see it on the on the uh, slide there. Hootsuite.com uh, is a phenomenal tool that is free, um, and Hootsuite uh, allows you to schedule social posts. So maybe you have a blog post that you, an uh, announcement that you want to go live, maybe you have a show or a new piece that you're pushing out. Um, you can actually schedule posts to Twitter and Facebook and uh, a bunch of other social media uh, right in this dashboard from Hootsuite.com. Uh, Hootsuite also has a bunch of other functionality uh, like URL shortening so you can track which people click on your links. We'll talk a little bit more about tracking here in a bit. So let's talk about exclusivity, uh, building value through exclusivity. Uh, an artist that I really love by the name of Amber Jean, she lived out in the middle of nowhere in Montana. Um, Amber had this brilliant idea uh, to create a members-only section of her website, and it's called the Patron Place. And the reason this is so brilliant, every artist needs continual cash flow in order to create art, right? That's, that's why you care about marketing at all, so you can make money, so you can then create more art, right? Uh, so Amber uh, created a members-only section of her website where artists can, or art patrons rather, can pay 
a, uh, a monthly fee or a yearly fee, and uh, they get early access to all of Amber's work. Uh, she shares videos and private blog posts there with them uh, where they can see her work in progress, and they get an early crack at uh, any new pieces that she creates before she publishes it out to the wider world. And that's been uh, a very successful piece of marketing for Amber for a long time. All right, let's talk about telling stories. Uh, if you have been reading The Abundant Artist for, uh, more, you know, for more than a month or so, uh, you know that uh, I recently did several blog posts about storytelling. And uh, this is a, an illustration of Joseph Campbell's uh, storytelling uh, template called the monument. And Joseph Campbell says that all good stories, the epic stories, the, the Gilgameshes, the, the Iliad, and uh, the Lord of the Rings all follow this format. And without going, you know, we could spend an entire webinar on storytelling, but um, let's talk about how we adapt the storytelling, the monument format to artists. So one of my favorite bio pages uh, is Glenn Seymour's bio page, and Glenn's going to be embarrassed because I've mentioned her so much in this webinar, but uh, Gwen's pretty great. And you can see on her bio page here, uh, you know, it's simple. Uh, there's a self-portrait of her that illustrates her work. And then uh, she talks, she tells a story. So it's not an academic bio. She doesn't talk about where she went to school. She doesn't talk about, uh, you know, her training or her art technique. She talks about her origin, her origin story. And that is the monument I embodied here. Um, and Gwen, you know, her full name is Gwen Liberty Seymour. She talks about how her uh, dad wanted to name her after the Liberty Bell, but her mother pointed out that that particular ding dong is in fact a crack. And then she goes on to talk about you know how she grew up and how she became an artist, and that is the stuff that most art collectors care about. Uh, you know, some curators and some uh, art critics and other people may care about your academic background. You can stick that at the bottom of the page or a separate page, but that's a great way to give people an introduction to you as an artist. Other things to talk about in your art story is making how you made your art happen. You know, how do you create your art? How do you find the emotional fortitude to do what you do? What kind of technical challenges do you overcome? You know, maybe, maybe you're like my friend Matt and you create 30 foot uh, steel mobiles and so you have to overcome engineering problems. Um, and by the way, Matt is a, 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 an oil pipeline engineer by training. That was his first job. So he talks about his engineering background and how he uses that to create huge pieces of art. Um, maybe even talk about funding challenges. And this is, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of artists are afraid of talking about, oh, you know, I, I don't want to be seen as a starving artist. But uh, you know, everybody knows that funding is a real challenge for artists. And talking about what you want to do in a positive way can be a great piece of marketing as well. Um, don't be afraid to go dark. This is something that I that I tell artists a lot. You don't have to wear yourself out in marketing. You can uh, go dark for a period of time, come back. Um, you quite often the going dark period when you don't want to talk to anybody in the world is when you are extremely creative. Maybe you are uh, deep into the studio, you know, take, working on a piece that's taking you weeks or months to finish. It's okay to go dark. After you go dark, you can come back and talk about what happened while you went dark. And also you can talk about growing as an artist and a person. These are important. Uh, people want to know about you as an artist and they want to develop relationships with you. Quite frequently, uh, the best art patrons in the world, they care a lot about the artists and they want to make sure that the artists are okay and that they're successful. Um, if you can talk, share your, a, little, a little bit about your story, you can find yourself to be very, very successful. And then talk about, let's talk about enabling others to tell, to tell your story. So after you've created blog posts and put your art up on your website and created videos, you need to make sure that your work is uh, accessible online, that your images and your page titles are optimized for search engine discovery and social media sharing. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier making sure that your page titles are, are matching what people search for. Uh, also creating titles that are interesting so that people uh, click on them. The most important uh, factor to uh, whether or not people click on something from social media is the title. Uh, you know, it's not the image, it's not the, uh, the text or, or the explanation, but the title of that post will determine whether or not people click through. Find an image sharing site that resonates with your art. Uh, you know, Facebook is a, very, is, a, is a very popular site to share images on, but there are tons of other niche uh, websites, 
it uh, for image sharing. Uh, Pinterest is a good one. Uh, Flickr. Uh, Imgur, if, if you do a lot of uh, satire and meme generated art. Uh, Photo Bucket, Shutterfly, SmugMug, Flickr, YouTube. Uh, these are all uh, websites where you can gain thousands and thousands of followers. Find one that matches what you do as an artist and then um, build a community for yourself there. Make sure that each image that you have on your website uh, has individual pages and URLs for each image. A lot of artists make the mistake of uh, if you click on an image and you get the little light box pop up, uh, that is okay for showing off your work, but people can't link to that image. They can't share that specific image on social media. And so you, you have some lost opportunities there. Um, add sharing buttons to each of your images, to each of those individual pages that your images are on. And then I, I briefly touched on this earlier, form a sharing alliance. Find five to ten other artists who, whose work you think is great and is not necessarily very similar to yours and form a sharing alliance with them. You can do this informally via email and say, hey, everybody, you know, uh, those of you who are in my sharing alliance, I published this new piece. Will you go ahead and share it with me? Um, you can also, there are programs that will do it for you that will uh, remind people to share for you. Uh, Triber.com is one that does a good job of that, T-R-I-B-E-R-R. Um, Triber will, anybody who joins the tribe, they can set up their accounts to automatically share to, to Twitter and Facebook every time you create a new blog post. Copyright concerns. A lot of artists uh, email me and say, oh, I'm really concerned about uh, my copyright. I'm concerned that people are going to steal my images. Uh, it's going to happen. Uh, the, the way that you can avoid people making money off of your art is Upload low-resolution low images, 72 dpi. If you don't know what that means, it's just the resolution settings on your image editing software, whether you use Photoshop elements or something else. Um, keep your images relatively small. Don't update, don't upload any images that are 2,000 pixels wide. Um, keep them, you know, 500 pixels wide or less. Uh, if you do those two things, keep them relatively small and have low dpi, uh, nobody's going to be able to make a print out of your work. It's just not going to look good. Uh, if somebody tries to make any money off of it, they're going to get laughed, uh, laughed away. Um, I would also say that uh, a lot of artists will put scripts on their website that, that disable right clicking. Uh, this really does nothing. Um, anybody who um, really wants to steal an image from your website or save it for later, they can just take a screenshot. Uh, so, so disabling right clicking on your website is just annoying and doesn't really actually help you with very much. Um, finally, I'll say leverage Creative Commons. Uh, creative Commons is the way of showing uh, the way of showing people on the web what you want done with your work, and you can do everything from lock it down to say, you know, this is my copyright. Do not share. Do not reproduce. Um, to things like, yeah, go ahead and you know use my work, but give me attribution, or go ahead and use my work in any derivative work that you created, but just give me attribution. So there's all kinds of ways that you can, uh, you know put your work on the web without it getting stolen um, or uh, you know, get credit when people use your work for um, when you, people are using your work for uh, other sorts of projects. Credibility. So if you have won any awards, if you've been on a television show, if you've gotten press even from a local small newspaper web, uh, newspaper, Put that on your website. This is uh, some screenshots from Matt LeBlanc's website, and uh, you can see that you know, on the left there, he, he won an award at the New York Curator Contest, um, and then on the right-hand side, he was featured on a television show on HG, HGTV. Um, Lisa Canning featured some of his work on some interiors that she decorated. This is priceless because people want to know that the art that they're purchasing is credible, that other people are collecting that artist and that they, that they don't have bad taste. They have taste that's just as good as other people's. Um, courting the press. So you can actually generate press coverage of your work. Um, if you know who your ideal collectors are, you can find out what magazines they read, what newspapers do they read. You know, if you're an artist in, in, a, in a relatively mid-sized town, uh, you can just find out who all the journalists are that cover arts uh, issues uh, and then just develop relationships with them. Follow them on, on social media. 
read all their articles, uh, you know, let them know that you appreciate the, wor the work that they do. Uh, if, they, if they publish an article that you find interesting, uh, send them a quick email and say, hey, thanks for this. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and when you have new work coming up, simply drop them an email and say, hey, I have this show coming up. I was hoping that you could drop by and see it. Um, learn how to write press releases. You don't need to be a press release master. You don't need to distribute it to every website on the web and every journalist in the world. Just find the local journalist who work for your local uh, publications and uh, shoot them a quick email and say, hey, uh, you know, here's my, uh, I have the show coming up, here's the date and time, I'd love it if you came, if, I'd love it if you came. Uh, keep a list of all those journalists and keep in contact with them regularly. The purchasing experience. So quite frequently, the purchasing experience is a real problem. You don't want readers who are just coming to your site to read your blog. You want to make sure that all of your blog posts and all of your videos and all of your stuff uh, somehow links back to the purchasing experience on your website. And if you are an artist who wants to sell your work on the web and not just be a showcase for galleries, you need to have some sort of e-commerce experience on, your web, on the web. This is uh, Michael Whitlark's website, and you can see that over there on the right-hand side, he has some options for GK print sizes. Yeah, he has five or six different uh, options in a drop-down there, uh, and he has everything from very small, I think, uh, you know, four by four pieces for 15 bucks, up to uh, you know very large pieces for several hundred dollars. So uh, these sort of e-commerce experiences are not hard to to uh, implement. Uh, if you are an artist who's afraid of building your own experience, there are um, a number of e-commerce shops out there that will uh, that, that are very easy to use. Uh, WordPress has several plugins that are easy to use, uh, like uh, excuse me, like WooCommerce or Cart66, which are free. To uh, Shopify and Big Cartel, which come with a monthly fee. Uh, testimonials for your website, super important. Melissa Smith, an artist that I worked with recently, uh, she has some great testimonials on her website. Uh, she built, or she not built, she painted a uh, pet portrait for an NFL linebacker, and uh, he gave her a testimonial for her website. Uh, you don't have to have a famous person on your website. You can see on the bottom left, Melissa has, uh, you know, a, a picture from a collector. Uh, ask the people who buy art from you. To take pictures of the art on their wall at home and to write just one sentence on why they like why they on what they think of your art and then send that picture and that one sentence to you it makes all the difference when you are uh, when you uh, are show when people are looking at your website if you have testimonials there looking at a couple questions here um, any way I can turn up the volume I'd recommend putting in some headphones. Uh, that's probably about as loud as I can go. Um, who did the painting with a solitary figure with the umbrella on a diffuse sort of beach scene? That, again, was Michael Whitmark. Uh, so building buzz. OK, uh, so the way that you build buzz around your art, say you have a new piece uh, coming out, once you have all of these other sort of systems in place, you have your blog in place, you know what you're blogging about, you have a, a content schedule, uh, you have uh, journalists who uh, are familiar with you and, and you correspond with from time to time, um, you have your automated pieces going out to social media. The, way, the, the easiest way to build buzz as an artist is to work in a series. Um, most artists that I know who are successfully selling art online have some sort of a series. Uh, Melissa Dinwiddie, my partner, has her Katuba Works website where she sells uh, Katuba prints uh, for uh, Jewish wedding contracts. <clears throat> um, you saw Michael Whitlark. He has a series of paintings that are similar to that, that fuzzy in the rain sort of feel. Uh, Melissa uh, Smith has her pet portrait series. Um, most artists who are successful online have some sort of a series. As you continue to publish uh, pieces that are similar to each other or have a similar uh, vibe or similar message, uh, people who identify with that message um, will find it and start to come back to you and share it with their friends. So working in a series is a really phenomenal way of building buzz around the work. 
Um, another, another thing to do is to uh, develop that relationship with journalists and bloggers and give them early inside access to your series as you're building it up. And having that group of early access collectors is a good thing as well. Building urgency. So we're not talking about, you know, buy now or, or something, you know, not, not any sort of sleazy way, but you want to let people know that um, there is a limited amount of time where they can buy your work. Um, you don't want to be the artist that is out there going, well, you know, if you ever decide that you want to buy my work, come back and let me know. You want to be the artist with power that says, this is a limited edition print. If I'm only making 20 of them. Uh, you know, when they're gone, they're gone. Um, you want to have an, an, a set of collectors who really love your work, who uh, you know, you let them know that if any of you are interested in bidding on this, I'm going to release it to the wider public on this date. So you have until then to uh, purchase it before somebody else gets it. Right? Um, treat your collectors really, really well, and give them early opportunities, um, and that will create urgency within that community. And then uh, you can create urgency within the wider community by selling limited edition prints, which Michael Whitlock does a good job of. I talked about him just a little bit. Uh, Michael, uh, for his birthday, he did a, a painting giveaway for anybody who had purchased something from him before. Uh, and so, in order to uh, get entered into the, camp, the the chance to win something, uh, you had to actually purchase something from Michael, and he drove. He was able to drive sales that way. Let's talk a little bit about measurement tools. We have just a, a, you know, a few minutes left uh, to talk about that. Um, measurement tools are immensely important. You need to understand uh, whether or not you are succeeding online. Obviously, the biggest, biggest measurement of success is whether or not you're selling art. But there are steps along the way. Let's talk about what those steps are. Google Analytics is a free tool that shows you the most important stats for your website. It shows you the number of unique visitors to your website, the bounce rate, which tells us whether or not somebody went to your website and immediately clicked, clicked away back to a search engine or back to something else. So tracking how many people are coming to your site and how long they're, how much time they're spending on your site and which pages, super important. Uh, you can also, using Google Analytics, track which websites are sending you the most traffic whether it's Facebook or Twitter or some specific website uh, sending, you web sending you traffic. And then you can also see which pages on your website are the most popular pages. And you want to look at that and say, OK, why are those pages so popular? Which traffic, you know, which, am I getting a lot of Facebook traffic to that particular page? Did it go viral on Facebook? Or is, or is somebody you know, doing a lot of searching and finding that page? Is it number one on some, some particular search? Uh, that can be immensely important uh, insight so that then you can know, okay, uh, this particular page is getting a lot of traffic. I need to create more pages like this um, or more pieces of art like this because, and, and because people are interested in that kind of stuff. If you know which website is sending you a lot of traffic, you can then go and develop relationships with the people who are running those websites or spend more marketing money and time on those websites because they're sending you traffic. Facebook insights. A lot of people post to Facebook without ever looking at uh, the results of those posts. Um, those of you who took my Facebook marketing course know that uh, Facebook insights can be tremendously valuable. Um, I will say that if you are still posting your art to your personal Facebook page, you are shooting yourself in the foot because the Facebook business pages are the only ones with these, uh, demo, uh, with these insight tools it can tell you, you know, where is your art popular? How many clicks to your website did we generate? How many people saw your art on Facebook? Those tools are all available if you're using a Facebook business page. Hootsuite Analytics. I talked about Hootsuite having a bunch of other features besides allowing you to schedule things and post them to multiple social networks at the, time, at the same time. Hootsuite can track uh, how many times uh, people click on your different links. Um, it can track uh, where those, uh, which websites uh, those clicks were on. Like if I use Hootsuite to post to LinkedIn, I can see how many people on LinkedIn clicked back to my website. And I can also see you know, in, a, in a time period which of my social media posts were the most popular, which ones got retweeted and clicked on the most. Immensely valuable information for me, right? 
Um, MailChimp Analytics. I talked a little bit about MailChimp as a, uh, a MailChimp as an email marketing vendor. Uh, MailChimp is free for anybody who has a mailing list of less than 2,000. So they really uh, you know, work with you until you have grown your list to the point where you are a valuable customer. Um, MailChimp will show you how many people opened your email, how many people clicked on your email, what part of the world they were in, what time of day people opened your email, uh, what time of day people clicked on it. Immensely, immensely valuable information. Uh, I get uh, tons of unsolicited artist newsletters every week. And usually, those newsletters are simply just sent from somebody's Gmail address. It's a, you know, they, they BCC'd everybody on the mail. You really need to stop doing that. Start sending your, your promotional email through an, um, an email marketing vendor like MailChimp. Uh, one, it's required by law to give people a way to unsubscribe, and MailChimp takes care of that for you. But two, um, MailChimp uh, will track which, which of your emails are open. And you can see whether or not people are responding to your emails. That's immensely valuable for you. A couple of questions in the quick look at. Um, what were the name of the free e-commerce sites? So uh, the, the, the free e-commerce stuff that I mentioned, uh, one was WooCommerce, which is a plugin for WordPress. Um, the other one was Cart66, which is another free plugin for uh, WordPress. Uh, and then uh, the other two that I mentioned were Shopify and Big Cartel, which are not free. They have a monthly fee. A couple of other questions. Um, if I have to leave, oh, how can I get the recording? I will email you about the recording. Uh, will Google Analytics work on WordPress? Yes, absolutely. And if you are using WordPress and you want to install Google Analytics, I would highly recommend uh, there's a plugin called Google Analyticator which will actually uh, make installing Google Analytics super, super easy. Uh, you just install the plugin and then uh, sign into the plugin with your Google account, and it will do the rest for you. It's very, very useful. Very, very easy. easy. Um, all right, a little, bit, a little bit more. So what's next? Um, we talked a lot about uh, you know, what kind of content you should be creating uh, we talked about uh, how to distribute that content, um, and we've talked a little bit about how to analyze that. Um, I want to share with you the advanced content marketing course that I have created. Uh, this course starts in two weeks, and it is three live sessions with recordings of all of those sessions. Uh, and in those three sessions, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about generating content that makes art collectors swoon. We're going to talk about advanced blogging and email tactics, and we're going to talk about social media hacks by the pros, how people, how pros use social media. So part one of the class is going to be generating content that makes, making, that makes collectors swim. In that class, we're going to take, we're going to look at your existing content, your blog posts, your art, the documentation of your process, and we're going to help you create a content calendar so that you are not pulling out your hair, what should I blog about? We're going to help you figure out what people are actually interested in. And um, understanding the analytics for your blog posts and how to make decisions based on the data from those analytics. Can I get a recording if I came in half an hour late? Yes, you can. Um, image optimization. Uh, so part two of the class, we're going to focus on image optimization, blogging, and email marketing strategy. So in this course, in the second part of the course, I am going to look at uh, all of your uh, websites. We're going to look at whether or not your images are properly optimized for the web and for search engines and for social sharing. Uh, we're going to talk about building, a, building that content calendar, and we're actually going to create content in that course and in between the courses. I'm going to give you feedback on the content that you're creating. And uh, we're going to talk about guest posting and sharing other people's content. Uh, we're going to talk about how, to, um, how search engines work and how they find your images. And we're going to uh, do what I call autoresponder madness. Uh, MailChimp and other email marketing platforms offer what's called an autoresponder, where when people sign up for your mailing list, uh, you can actually create a series of emails that, respond, that, that go out automatically that market for those people in, in, in a way that makes it look like it's coming directly from you in a personalized way, 
but is actually uh, you know, automated marketing that gets people excited about what you do and excited about buying from you. The third part of the class, the social media hacks from the pros, we're going to talk about how to find where art collectors are hanging out on, uh, you know, whether whatever target audience you have as an artist, odds are that those people spend some time on them, whether it's on Facebook or websites or other places. Um, we're going to talk about collaborating with other artists on social media. Um, we're also going to talk about drafting off with more successful artists online and social media celebrities, looking at, talk about how to find people who are interested in art and uh, draft up the success of the people who follow uh, bigger artists. And then we're going to talk about automating and analyzing social media, and I'm going to show you step by step how to use some of the tools that we've talked about here in this. Uh, some, other, some more questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on whether or not to put artwork prices on websites? Marissa, that's a great question. Uh, yes, I think you absolutely should put prices on your website if you intend to sell art on your website. If, however, you uh, have the intention of simply being in galleries and museums and not doing anything else, uh, then I would talk with your gallery uh, owner because they may not be comfortable with that. Um, however, I think if you are going to sell art on your website, you absolutely should sell your art on your website. How much money should a new artist set aside for marketing? That's a great question. Um, so the rule of thumb is that 10% of your business cost should be marketing. Uh, obviously, for a new artist, you may not have much money to put into your business. Uh, you can do a lot of this stuff for free. You can create content for free. You can create videos of you standing in front of your art talking about it for free. You can create blog posts for free. You can create a website for free. Um, until you start making money, I wouldn't worry about it too much. But once you do start making money, I think 10% of your business cost uh, going into marketing is appropriate. How will we do this course again after this first go? Um, we're going to do this course just like this one here. Uh, we're going to do it via webinar. Um, people will be able to uh, raise their hands and ask questions live on the call. Uh, so you'll be able to get all the individual attention you need during the course. Um, web versus blog value. So uh, there's no difference between a website and a blog. A blog is a website. Um, and you should not have a standalone blog. Your blog should be part of your website. Are you going to be giving one-on-one -on -one attention in the course? Uh, yes, we will be have we will have one-on-one -on -one attention during the course. Uh, there will be some opportunities for uh, feedback during and between the courses. There will also be opportunities to uh, purchase additional one-on-one -on -one consultations with me uh, if the individual attention during the course is not enough. How to get the blog and website related? Great question. Uh, if you have a standalone blog, uh, the, easy, the easiest example, if you have a website and a blog post blog, a blogspot blog, uh, you can actually export your blogspot blog and import that. We'll go into detail on how to do that in the course. Uh, can you suggest someone who can set up a website with all the bells and whistles and plugins through WordPress? Yes, me. Uh, Mary, you can go ahead and contact me directly. Um, I can also refer you to other people if you need that. Um, what do you think about having pictures of your art on your website but directing to Etsy to buy? I'm coming from the perspective of someone who can't afford right now to spend money on a shopping cart. Okay. Uh, Hannah Lore, that's a great question. Yes, absolutely. If you cannot afford to set up an e-commerce experience on your website, no problem. Send them to Etsy. It's a great way to start. Um, I've, been in work, I've been working in digital art exclusively. Will this help me? Yes, absolutely, Gene. Uh, if, I mean, assuming that you have something to sell. If you are selling, if you're just putting your digital art out there and you don't have a product to sell, uh, then you know, probably not. But if you are looking to sell prints, like g play prints, uh, high quality prints of your digital art, yes, absolutely, this will help you. Can't do it in three weeks, Georgia, no problem. Uh, the, as I mentioned, the courses will all be recorded. Uh, so you will be able to uh, do those courses in your own time at your own pace. Um, how do I go about getting advertisers on my blog? Great question, Lindsay. Uh, sort of out of outside the scope of what we're talking about here, you can feel free to contact me directly. Um, how much will the course cost? Great question, Juliana. Let's talk about that. Um, so what you get for the course, uh, there's going to be the three hour long live classes um, where we're going to uh, talk about exactly how to build an automated marketing pro uh, platform 
that grows your audience in ways that you you know, haven't done before. Um, there will be video recordings and text transcripts available uh, for each of these. The text transcripts take uh, you know a couple days. I have to have my transcriptions to do it. But the video recording uh, will be available within 24 hours, and the transcripts will be available within uh, 48 to, uh, two to three days, um, just depending on how quickly the, my transcriptions can get to it. And then we will also give you access to a members-only mastermind group on Facebook. Um, and essentially, uh, there will be a private group on Facebook, and you can ask me all the questions you want there. Um, and how do we get the recording? Great question. Uh, you can get the recording. I will post that recording uh, on my website, and then I will email you. You can download the recording, or you can watch it live on my website, whatever works easiest for you. Um, so the course, the cost of the course is $197. Um, and to get the course, you can go to my website, theabundantartist.com, slash content. Um, and as I mentioned, the first course starts two weeks from, uh, from tomorrow. And I'm really excited to have you all there. I uh, hope to see you signed up for the course. Uh, the website is live now. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to continue posting them here. I'll be here for a little bit uh, until everybody's done with their questions. Um, go again. Go ahead and think, uh, go ahead and uh, you can go over to theabundantartist.com/content. Uh, you can sign up for the course there. Uh, that $197 price is only good for the first 30 artists to sign up. Um, after that, the price goes up uh, to $297, I believe. Um, again, first course first course starts May 27th. Thanks so much, Wendy. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to provide the information. Uh, hopefully, you can take it and run with it and do something. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you inside the course, Wendy. Um, if anybody who is still on the call has questions, I can actually unmute you, and we can talk live. So if you have a question um, and you want to talk about it, feel free to uh, post your question and let me know you'd like to talk, and we can do that. Uh, that course, uh, the price, the $197 is the price for all three courses. So uh, you get the, uh, the whole thing for $197. How does this differ from the Art and Powers course? Jan, that's a great question. Uh, the Art and Powers course is really a beginner course. Uh, Art and Powers is really for artists who are just getting started in their, in their career. They're learning how to uh, market themselves. Uh, this course is really for artists who uh, are comfortable with blogging, they're comfortable with their website, they're comfortable with uh, creating blog posts and maybe even video or audio, they're comfortable on the web, and they really want to create an automated system to grow their, to grow their art business. Uh, will we be running a second course starting later than May? Yes, we will. Um, I'll, I will be offering this course as a downloadable recording, um, and I will be doing another live version of it uh, in the future. What is the least amount of success that you've witnessed after a person has invested in this info? Uh, the least amount of success. Uh, well, the least amount of success is nothing. Um, you know, this is the first time that I've offered this particular course, um, but I've been working with artists uh, for three years, and it really comes down to you doing the work, right? Um, you can pay for the course, and you can sit through the course, and you can do nothing, and you'll get nothing. But uh, if you actually do the work, you will see success. Thanks a lot, Catherine. Surname of the artist Jolie you mentioned. Uh, that's Jolie Gillibo. Um, that's G-U-I-L-L-E-B-E-A-U. -E -E um, it's almost impossible to spell, so good luck. Uh, thanks, Jan. How does one get the Art of Powers course? Uh, you can go, uh, Pam, you, you can go, to, if, you're, if you're a beginning artist and you're really not ready for uh, you don't feel comfortable on the web and you're just getting started, uh, you can go to artandpowers.me. That's not, there's no .com, it's artandpowers.me, and you can sign up to the waiting list there. Uh, Art and Powers is only open a few times a year. Will you be sending a replay of this webinar? Yes, absolutely, I will. Um, is PayPal a good way to accept credit cards online? Yes. Um, you get a more advanced card, you're going to get people who don't have PayPal accounts. 
Um, good talk today. Yes, thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, thank you, Juliana. Unrelated question. Do you have a resource to print a small run of hardbound four-colored books inexpensively? I do not. Um, Colleen, I would recommend uh, checking out Amazon's uh, I can't remember the name of it, but Amazon has a service. That's the only one that I'm really aware of. Um, thank you, Linda. Thanks, uh, Bohan, Bojan. I'm not sure how you say that name. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Linda. Um, I'm tempted, but there are some bits of the course that I'm not keen on. Is there a space to make learning fit us? Yes, absolutely. Um, so for those of you who aren't exactly sure that the course is going to cover everything you need, um, you know, the, this is an overview of the course. Uh, obviously, we have two weeks between now and then. I'm going to be taking a lot of sign up for the course and make sure that we cover all of the stuff that you want to hear about. Um, you know, so in my ideal world, yes, absolutely, we're going to be able to tailor the course to the students who are there. Thanks, John. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Pamela. Uh, Joni, no, you, do, uh, the, you don't have to purchase separately. Thank you for signing up for the course, by the way. Uh, the course isn't ready yet, so uh, as I mentioned, it starts in two weeks. So uh, you're, if you're logging in, there's nothing there just yet. Um, I'm getting blog up and running in your site. It's been very helpful. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Cher. Uh, Bev, do you have uh, do you do website evaluations? Yes, I do, Bev. Contact me directly through my site. Uh, P oh, Jerry says PS Print is a great printer for all kinds of work. Um, Shutterfly does great books. Oh, that's right, Sharon. Thank you for that. I totally forgot about Shutterfly. Yeah, they do a good job. Carla says thank you, thank you, Carla. Uh, thank you, Georgia. Uh, thank you, Colleen. Thanks, Don. Thanks, John. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to be working with those of you who signed up for the course. Do feel free to reach out to me uh, if you have any questions, and we'll see you soon.